Welcome back, everyone. Ah, uh, Thomas. Agent Morgan, it's past 2100. Let's meet up again at the community center tomorrow. I haven't been sleeping much since this all started, to be honest. I'm exhausted. I was just about to suggest the same thing. I'll make arrangements for people to gather between 1500 and 1700. I'll try and get as many people as I can to come, so don't be late, okay? Don't be late. I'll be there. The community center's on the south side. I've marked it on your map. Thanks, Thomas. Well then, see you tomorrow. Speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83, directed by Douglas McCown. Right, it was filmed pretty cheap, but still it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth, I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. I wonder how the sequel turned out. You know, the monster in that one responded to sound. Wait, Zach. Sounds a lot like the movie Tremors. I think that one was back in 89, directed by Ron Underwood. Now that was a great role for Kevin Bacon. Masterpiece. Zach, that one had sequels like crazy. I remember there was a fourth one. I've only seen the first one, though. Tremors. I think Fred Ward was in it. You say Fred Ward and I say Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. That one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. Guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series like 007, but it had no sequels. A real shame. Do you remember the martial arts they used in that film? Called Sinanju? The ultimate in martial arts, using no weapons at all. Remo's Master Chun ran across water, remember? And he loved soap operas. Man, that was a good character. He was played by Joel Grey, the best supporting actor in Cabaret. Of course, in Remo, he had so much makeup on you couldn't tell.
Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We need to be at the community center by 1500 today. Just think of talking in front of all those people. What do you think, Zach? It's going to get fun. Joel Gray's daughter is, of course. That's right, Jennifer Gray. You knew that, right, Zach? Jennifer Gray. She's in one of my most favorite movies, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, 1986, directed by John Hughes. Huh, that one was so 80s. Zach, you're not the most cheerful guy I know, but you really do like those cheerful movies. We used to love those teenage movies back then, didn't we? Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink, St. Elmo's Fire, and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Heckerly. Now that was an impressive film. You've got Sean Penn in the lead, with Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates, not to mention Nicolas Cage and Forrest Whitaker were in it too. And the original book and the script were written by Cameron Crowe. How could that not be a great film? Do you remember, Zach? When that movie ended, the last words, the end, was from an arcade game. That's right, it was from Missile Command. That stuck in my head for a while. The memories. I feel like I have a lot of movies to catch up on. Let's just hope we can get to the end of this case soon. Then maybe we can catch up on a few. Give some thought about what movie you want to see next, Zach. I've been thinking about what movie I'd like to watch next, and finally I've made a decision. It's always hard to narrow it down just to one movie, but I've put a lot of thought into this, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. 1975, directed by Steven Spielberg himself, the grandfather of panic movies, set in a small town in Massachusetts. That movie made me stay away from the beach for years. I was always afraid that a hand might come floating up. 
You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah? It's Jaws. The underwater camera work accompanied by that John Williams music. I'd never been that scared by a movie before. But the best thing about it is that it isn't just another panic movie. The mayor who won't close the beach even when there are so many victims. Chief Brody putting the citizens' lives above all else. The film gave a lot of time to the dispute and friction between them. It certainly had a lot of messages for a two-hour film. That's probably another reason why it was such a record-breaking hit. One of my regrets in life is that I didn't see it at the movie theater. I guess I was still just a child back then. But still, I wanted to taste that terror in real time. That reminds me, Zach. Did you know this one? Jaws also appears in another movie that was produced by Spielberg, the second Back to the Future. It was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who later made Forrest Gump. That's also a masterpiece, of course, but we'll discuss that another time. So the scene where Jaws appears is right after Marty McFly goes 30 years into the future. He passes by a movie theater and is attacked by a holographic shark. Marty is shocked, of course, but looking closer, he sees the words, Jaws Part 19. The director is credited as Steven Spielberg Jr. In reality, there were actually only four Jaws movies. It was still a great joke. 30 years from 1985 would be 2015. We'll be there pretty soon. I wonder what life would be like by then, Zach. Greenvale Community Center. Now that's an impressive building. The clock tower is impressive too. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. I'm not some tree in the wind this time, either. Well, that was a tough roll. I was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations wishes to speak with you. Good afternoon. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Some of you are already aware by now of the tragic murder of Anna Graham. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Unfortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I ask to have you gathered here so I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. Those of you with children, especially of Anna's age. Please, guide your children away from such places at all costs. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. Now I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a chance that the murderer is mimicking the story. Women should also be especially careful I would hate to see more victims. Who's the 
professional, Lily. That's Carol, Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Thomas's sister. So, as I have said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs>